Greetings everyone, Alpha here. You're all doing well today. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Vanilla Gaming Private WoW server. Vanilla Gaming is exactly what it sounds like. Vanilla WoW. The only difference here is you have the option of playing it on 1x, which is like the experience rate you would have seen in retail, or 14 times the experience rate you would have seen in retail. Now, this is patch 1.12.1. So that means all the goodies are there, such as Nax, Blackwing Lair, Molten Core, and amazingly, all of them actually work here. The server does have some pros and cons, so let's jump right into those and talk about the good, the bad, and, of course, the other. The biggest question that determines, is a server good? We have to ask, is it playable? Does it work? And the answer is a resounding yes. The server is pretty stable. Lag spikes are pretty rare, and the crashes are actually pretty tolerable. They do happen, but they're not that often. Latency is also pretty playable, typically falling between the 175 and 300 range. It does scale depending on how many people are on, but considering it's coming from Europe, it's actually a pretty good stream. It's also one of the friendliest private servers I think I've ever played on. The people are really nice and super helpful actually made a comment in world chat about the lack of gear on the auction house. A really nice message from a really helpful level 60 mage. So it gladly run me through dead mines. Took him up on the offer, filled up my bags to the point of bursting, and after a couple of times... Okay. Several. Okay. Dozens of times deleting grays. I came out with some fat loot. Server does allow both voting and donations. Basically how it works, donations are done through the site, and they're pretty modest. Some of the items can be purchased for as low as one euro, some of the more expensive ones are about 35 euros. Basically, you give them cash and they give you donation points in return. They're pretty typically useful for a fresh 70 um, you can also donate for a character rename and even an instant level 60, which if you absolutely cannot stand leveling, may be worth the $10. You cannot donate for gold, but you can, however, vote for it, which is kind of interesting. Voting through Vanilla Gaming lets you vote on up to seven private server ranking sites, and only after you've voted on at least four of them will you get one vote point. You vote up to twice a day, every 12 hours, and basically you get two vote points per day. Vote points can be spent on items such as gold, even flasks, and some really interesting items such as scrolls and snowballs. Snowballs? Who votes to receive snowballs? I'll have to remember that next time American Idol's on that I'm supposed to be compensated in snowballs. Anyways. One problem with the uh, voting for gold system, it doesn't really go far enough. One vote point will only get you about 10 gold. Eight vote points will only get you about 100 gold, but at least you get a small bonus. Problem is, if you're leveling at 14x, by the time you actually get that gold, you're stuck buying your mount. Stupid peasant mount. Anyways, I guess that's our cue to talk about the other side. The dark side. <laughs> I want you to join the dark side. Yes, you, dimwit! You'll cruise the galaxy in a pimped-out ride, blow up entire planets on a whim, and shoot at fat men just for fun. Plus, you get money for junior college and sloppy joes on Tuesdays. Delish! So make the jump to light speed toward total galactic domination. Sign your life away to the dark side. It's not just a job. It's your stinking duty! Oh, um... Not that dark side, as uh, we're talking about the drawbacks of the server. Making money is almost impossible. The professions in WoW are for noobs, and we only really leveled them in retail because we were noobs. I thought of a couple of professions like enchanting, alchemy, maybe leatherworking. Crafting professions really give you nothing useful unless you're, let's say, a blacksmith going for the Arcanite Reaper which would require a ton of Molten Core farming for Thorium Brotherhood rep, not to mention the time it would take to level these professions. At least they were nice enough to double the crafting points in these skills, basically meaning every time you get a skill point in a profession, you actually get two. 
still, I think I'd rather go fishing. Ugh. The other issue I've seen on here that makes it hard to make money is population size. Vanilla gaming, unfortunately, is kind of hard to gauge due to the fact that in vanilla, you can only slash who like 50 people at a time. From my best observation, from the Alliance side, it's typically about 150 players up to a peak of a few hundred. Horm seems to outpopulate the Alliance a little bit, so at peak, there are probably 500 to 750 total people on. Unfortunately, you have to pick a side, which means regardless, you're still stuck with a smaller pool of players. And sadly, Vanilla missed out on a great opportunity with a merged auction house. A merged auction house is really nice because you basically get twice the people to play with. It's really a, a, an easy way to basically double the revenue. I've often brought this issue up on private servers, especially the vanilla servers, is that first off the auction house needs to be merged. It wouldn't be a bad idea to script an auction house bot in either. Something that, say, buys profession items at a low but fair market value. An example would be linen cloth. It's rarely, rarely bought, and as you can see, I mean, it typically only goes for about 30 silver. Copper ore really isn't a whole lot different. In the same way, it's in there for a little overpriced, but nobody actually buys it at that price. It, you might get one to two gold off of it if you're lucky. It rarely sells. A lot of times you end up not even getting your money back from your deposit, so you're wasting more money than you're actually making. If one out of ten auctions sell, you just basically broke even. For a cash strap newbie, it can get incredibly frustrating. Wool cloth, silk cloth, I mean, up even up to about mage weave, it's pretty much the same old song and dance. It's almost impossible to make gold these low levels. Then you add in the fact that weapons aren't a whole lot different. I mean, as you'll see, there's barely any two-handers, or maybe a page if we're lucky. I mean, weapons, or excuse me, axes, swords, maces, how are you supposed to level as a melee character? It's incredibly difficult to hit or kill anything. Before too long, you'll end up out in Red Ridge like I did, in almost full grays, a couple of greens, trying to kill mobs that have 500 more health than you. It just gets incredibly frustrating, and it makes things very, very difficult. Now, if you're smart, you can get around this by leveling your first character as a caster. If you take only the absolutely necessary spells, you're going to save yourself a lot of gold. I'd recommend a mage, because then you can also just pick up uh, or make your own food and water. That saves even more gold, saves bag space. Since you aren't relying on getting a good weapon like you would be on a paladin or a warrior or a rogue, it makes it so much easier to level. Nothing's really hitting you, so it doesn't matter if some of your gear is gray. You might have to drink a little bit more often, but that's the worst thing. Best of all, though, when you decide to level that character that you really want to play, such as a, you know, your warrior, you have a level 60 character that's capable of farming uh, stuff for you along the way. Not to mention, if you put it on a second account, you can get all the help you need with those impossible group quests, such as Hogger. Anyways, where were we? I love to sing uh, about the moon and the June and the spring. Uh, I love to sing uh, about a sky of blue Whoops, or a wrong channel. Or two, and there we go. Server has a lot of bugs also, and that can be a problem because, again, the most important thing is does the server work? Some of the most frustrating bugs are the ground pathing issues. Sometimes these mods will run through hills like this guy does, up trees, up the side of buildings, and die in places that are out of your reach, basically robbing you of your loot. Even worse, some mobs can sometimes die or evade out in those places, keeping you stuck in combat, which by itself is frustrating. But if you have to Alt F4 out of the game, you instantly die, sometimes unable to even get back to your body. Well, that's not fair. I don't want to have to spare it, as I'm poor already. Another common problem I've come across is a healing bug. I'm not entirely sure what causes it, but it's incredibly frustrating. So basically, when you're healing, I'm not sure why, but what will happen is you'll bug out, especially like it happens if you're clicking buttons too fast. You know, we've all been trained, don't click, use your fingers. If you move mid-heal, sometimes it does it, 
but basically it'll cause you to be silenced. You can see here, I'm running around chasing Horde trying to get them to kill me, and they're just running away from me. Which is funny, but holy. But it's an inconvenience when you're out questing or whatever, but in a dungeon or a raid, you can see how this would cause some mayhem. The answer seems to be to log all the way out to your desktop, and then log all the way back in. As you can see it happened here, thankfully I was able to stab this guy to death and somehow managed to fix the issue. Whatever. I also think it happens to DPS. I never had it happen on my warrior, so it's going to be kind of something that's exclusively to casters. Um, maybe like paladins or something if they're red, but yeah, I'd really like to know exactly what causes it. I tried to look on the forums, but it is something that if you choose to play on the server, you're going to have to deal with. And <laughs> I promise you at some point or another, it's going to tick you off. Progression is fairly good on this server, but it's kind of limited at the same time. The real reason, once again, comes back to the population. Guilds do raise, and amazingly, amazingly there are some guilds that even do knacks, but the real issue is finding people that are on your gear level that are interested in doing the same content. You know, I don't know how often those big guilds recruit, and there's not that many of them, and they seem kind of sporadic and when they actually raid. Um, GMs are friendly. I mean, I've had pretty good experiences with the GMs. The only problems is they have a hands-off policy. So unless someone is botting, hacking, or exploiting, they kind of take the hands-off approach, um, especially when it comes to ninjas. I've argued that for a long time. That's another big flaw with a lot of these private servers. They need to be more involved with that. I understand that things can go wrong and a hunter's pissed because he didn't get some two-handed weapon with strength because he wants to be a melee hunter or something stupid like that. But at least talk to the people and find out the reason. You know, when somebody walks in, takes all the loot and tells you, you know, hey, big middle finger, it's frustrating. You know, especially when you've taken the time to go there and help him get those. A list on forums is great because at least it lets me know who it is, but I don't know who that guy's alts are. I mean, if he does it on his Warlock, I don't know that I'm giving his Priest an Epic the next raid. So it just... They need to find a better way to discourage uh, ninjing, especially. especially uh, these people discourage people from sticking around on these servers. So it, it's something that at some point, hopefully one of them is going to address. PvP is almost non-existent. Sorry, PvP fans. Ganking is allowed, but multivoxing in PvP is not. You can multivox all you want in PvE, not in Battlegrounds, and you can't gank people in the open world. Can get you an instant ban. Battlegrounds are desolate wastelands. Warsong Gulch is about the only one I've ever seen pop. And it's really a shame because this is one of the few vanilla servers I've come across where Alterac Valley is actually scripted correctly. But they're just isn't enough people to do it. Um, Double Honor Weekends, maybe, but outside of that, all I've seen, Erethy Basin's rarely rare. It's a lot of Warsong Gulch, so if you really like Warsong Gulch, you'd probably be okay here, but the other issue with that too is it's really erratic. Sometimes it's 2 on 10, sometimes it's 9 on 10, sometimes it's 5 on 7. You can never tell how many people are actually going to show up on each side. So that kind of takes a little bit of the luster away from it. It's just not as fun. I, mean, I guess it's probably as fun as we win, but it's not so fun to be on the losing end with two people. And that just leaves us with the dirty. So overall, this is a pretty good server to play on if you just want to waste some time, level, and appreciate working quests. People are amazing, but it just lacks the pair base to be really great. Population. I'd give it a 4. Not bad. Not very good, either. Auction House? Give it a solid 3. There's gotta be stuff for people to buy, and stuff for people to sell. That's just how a healthy Auction House works, and this server really lacks on it, unfortunately. Health. I mean, the amount of trolling, friendliness, chances of grouping up, having a fun guild, enjoying playing, 10. Without a doubt. This server's saving grace is the health of it. You're gonna have a fun time. People are real nice. Functionality, meaning stuff does stuff work like it's supposed to. Yes, most of the class abilities work, but I still can't get over that healing bug. Then again, dungeon scripting is really good. So I'm gonna go with a solid six on this one. 
Overall, this server gets a dirty six. Hope you guys found this helpful. Feel free to toss me a like, share, subscribe, or comment. Just be nice to one another. Alpha signing off. Take it easy.